Hello, my name is Dr. Martin O'Reilly, and I'm here today to present on performance rate of fitness in adolescent and senior male handball players. The aims of the study that we completed this year were to build an understanding of the profile of handball players as they de develop from age 11 upwards in a top tier Austrian handball club, right up to the Master League team. Through this, we wanted to identify areas of opportunity for strength and conditioning to enhance player development in the future. And we also wanted to assess the feasibility of wide scale fitness testing in handball for male and female athletes across multiple geographies. The testing we completed involved 90 male athletes from the age of 11 through to their mid 30s and all testing was completed in July 2021 at a training camp. For this study, the six measures that we focused on were height, weight, shoulder external range of motion or flexibility, counter movement jump height, reactive strength score from the 10-5 test and the T-test for agility. <laughs> So signal sensor and pairs of the phone that captured all of these fitness tests. The first fitness test we completed was shoulder external rotation. This very commonly relates to throwing velocity along with a number of other upper limb assessments. The second fitness test we completed was counter movement jump height, hands on hips, maximal jump height, assessing the slow stretch shortening cycle capabilities in each athlete. The next thing we looked at was the fast stretch shortening cycle via repeated hop tests, 10 hops on the spot, taking the average of the best five reactive strength. So a short contact time and a good height indicates a strong reactive strength performance. So just to show this again, The next fitness test we completed was a T-test for agility, whereby an athlete starts at cone A, sprints to cone B, shuffles to cone C, back to D, to B, and back to A. Their legs must not cross over as they do this, an excellent score would be below 9.5 seconds. We tested all of these fitness tests across eight groups. On the youngest end of the spectrum, we had the uh, players who were born in 2009, so age 11 or 12. Then at the top end of the spectrum, we had the HLA Challenge team playing at the second tier in Austria and the HLA Meisterliga team who were also senior players. And from between there, we had every age group from 2008, seven, six, five. I grouped 2004 and three together as there were only a few players present who were born in 2003. So that group uh, to be statistically important were merged together. So initially, just looking at height, just to show the descriptive statistics of the group, you can see that the average height from the 2009 born players was around 1.55 centimetres, up to about 1.86, 1.85 on both the HLA Challenge and HLA Meisterliga teams. Interestingly, there was, of course, huge variance or standard deviation, as these whiskers show, across all age groups because of the different positions and different levels of maturation and growth in the players. This just shows the same information in box plot, again, showing a high level of variance and also crossover between each group, uh, particularly the older groups from 2005 uh, onwards, the players seem to have reached maximal height. In terms of weight, we see the players grow from an average of about 50 kilos at age 11 and 12, up to an average of about 92 kilos on the Meister Liga team. Again, there's a lot of variance on each team, and you can imagine that is, again, due to player size, player training age, and also player position as well. This is the box plot formation. Interestingly, it's almost as if you can split it into two groups, the players born before uh, 2006 over here, and the players after uh, seem to have very clear trends in, in weight, uh, as would be expected with increased gym training and maturation of the players. In terms of the shoulder flexibility, what was very interesting was there was no real differences between the groups dependent on their age or team. This is because mobility can be developed at all ages and should be developed at all ages. What you can see across all teams is there's some very strong scores up around 120, 130 and beyond, but there's also some very low scores within the standard deviations, such as 80 degrees. Players should definitely aim to have a strong shoulder external rotation score 
um, aiming to be over 100 degrees at a minimum. So this could be something to focus on for surface conditioning. This again just shows in box plot that there was huge crossover across all age groups in the shoulder flexibility scores and the medians showed no clear trend as the players develop. This was actually the only fitness or performance test we completed where we didn't see a clear trend. Looking at count to movement jump height across the players, the youngest players born in 2009 had an average jump height of 21.36 plus or minus a standard deviation of 5.2 centimetres. The best team was actually the HLA challenge team who had an average score of 41.51 centimetres plus or minus um, 4.13. This shows that power clearly develops very well relative to body weight across the, the players as they develop through their adolescent years. Interestingly, the actual Meister League team's jump heights were the second highest. This is likely because the HLA Challenge team has some very fit younger players who are actually due to play on the Meister League team this year. Similarly, in the box plot formation for the CMJs, we see a very consistent growth and in, across the medians. There are, of course, outliers in many different groups with lower jump heights and sometimes with higher scores as well. For reactive strength, we saw an improvement from age to those born in 2009 of an average score of 0.94 up to an average score of 1.76 on the challenge team and a score of 1.42 in the Bundesliga team. One interesting observation here is that the average score for the players born in 2006 was 1.45. This is actually a really, really strong score comparative to the players born the year um, after them and the year before them. So the slightly older players born in 2005 had a lower score. After speaking with the coaches and the team, that they mentioned that the 2006 team have really been focusing on strength conditioning and plyometric training. And this shows the potential in general to shift the curve upwards so that perhaps these players will go on to have a much higher RSI score when they reach senior playing age in the Challenger or Bundesliga teams. Fragility. The faster the score, the better. What was really interesting to see is that the HLA Challenge and Bundesliga teams and the eldest teams, those who were about 18 years old, had really strong scores below 9.5 seconds on average. There was again variation, but actually relatively small standard deviations. Agility clearly develops very well across the handball players as they mature and in quite a linear fashion in this group. I think this is great to see and indicates good, good ability to play handball and also to be adaptive and agile in defence. The box plots show similar trends, just also highlighting some outliers that were slower athletes before they get to the age groups of 2006, 2005 and 2004. Overall, looking at these fitness test results across this whole club, club of 90 players who were tested, I think there are some key observations worth discussing. So movement can certainly be trained at all ages. And we saw in the shoulder flexibility results that actually it didn't matter what age you were, you could have a very good score or a very poor score for shoulder flexibility. Players at any age who have limited flexibility or, or movement should really train this because it's fundamental to skill development and strength conditioning uh, completion as well. For strength, power and speed, some of the scores, for instance, the peak average jump height being 41 centimetres is quite low relative to other power-based sports like basketball. I think in most handball clubs, there's a need for more S&C focus, focusing on strength training, plyometrics, agility, and sprinting. I think with all of these, if we jump, for instance, to agility or reactive strength, if there's a higher focus, the curve will shift up faster and um, up to a higher peak point for the elite players if there's a more uh, SNC focus in the training, and that's a real opportunity for the sport of handball. Finally, this was a very small data set based only on male players. I think it's really important that we encourage uh, the handball community to test athletes accurately across all genders and geographies and age groups. Output are here to help. We are Elite Sports Science Made Easy. All of this testing was done with one sensor per athlete and can be completed much, much more quickly than ever previously possible. Our company were founded by two Irish handball players, so we really want to help build this knowledge in the handball community and improve the effect of strength conditioning on handball performance. I'd like to thank the Fivers Handball Club in Austria for allowing and completing this fitness testing and for the European Handball Federation Scientific Congress 
for inviting me to complete this talk and analysis. We really wish you all the best with the rest of the conference, and I hope that output can help